Hey crew, today I'm going to be reviewing the newly released Persona 5 Joker Figma from Max Factory. I actually just received this figure this week from AmiAmi.com. I'd highly recommend using them if you want to buy this. So first we'll take a look here at the front of the box. We have a nice big uh, window to display everything. We see Joker here with all of his accessories, face plates, his uh, gun, his kunai, Morgana in there also. It's a pretty neat uh, little uh, additional figure that they included inside this package. So on the left here we have a picture of Joker and he doesn't seem to have his mask on this picture. And this is the left side of the box. Uh, on the back of the box we have several different photos of the figure. It looks pretty cool. Let's take a look at that. And on the right side we have a picture of Joker, this time with his mask on. So, without any further delay, let's unbox this figure. Just gonna get it open right now. I'm gonna pop the top open with this uh, exacto knife here. All right, so we're gonna just slide the top open. It's a bit tight. Right, there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna put this right here in the back, this box, and we have the figure inside its plastic casing. I'm just gonna do a little rotation to show these sides. It's not much uh, to show that I haven't shown already. Alright, let's get this figure out of here now. Alright. And here we have the Joker Figma. And as you can see, it has some plastic pieces on his coattails. Just uh, let's slide those off. Looks pretty nice. Looks like a very uh, good figure. I can already tell the sculpt is very nice. It feels pretty good. And yeah, it's gonna get rid of some plastic size collar. It's a very nice looking figure. A lot of good detail. All right, there he is with his uh, his normal expression, no mask, his neutral expression. And just taking a quick look pretty nice. So we'll just set him aside and take a look at the accessories real quick and then we'll come back to the figure and take a closer look. So as far as accessories go they are all in this little plastic, this little plastic pack they're all bundled together so first we have a little extension and uh, an extra joint in case you break one of them I suppose for his hands. There's uh, several different interchangeable hands, open palm, there's gun hand, and here is his stand, so definitely want to open that as well. And here we have Morgana's figure, which is really cool, and I'm really glad they included him. It's a really nice addition, and he looks really nice. It's a pretty cool little figurine that you can pose right next to Joker. It's very nice. We're going to take a look at his weapons. So, first we'll look at his face plates. Here we have a sort of snarky looking face. He's looking to the side in that one. And the next face plate. Just gonna get this out. Alright, there we go. It appears to be a very neutral, determined sort of look. Determined expression. And we have a hair piece here, which includes the mask that Joker wears inside the palaces. So that's actually how you put the mask on. It's two different hair pieces, which is pretty neat and it looks like a nice, nice little mask. Very well detailed, good paint apps. All 
right, and here is Joker's knife, his uh, kunai, and there's a lot of nice little details in here too, a good paint job as well. It looks like a good, good little accessory, and here is, let me just pop this out, Joker's pistol. Uh, don't worry, it's not a real gun, it's only a model pistol from the shop in Central Street where Joker buys his fake weapons. Alright, so we're going to do a quick uh, sort of pan and take a look at all of his accessories. Let's put this plastic... And this appears to be a stand for Morgana, so let me grab him real quick. Yeah, he'll, he, Morgana says stands on this with a little plastic peg inside his back. So you stick a peg inside the hole in his back and that will allow him to stand on this little, this little stand. And we'll show that off in a second. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So here's all the accessories we just took a look at. The stand, the interchangeable hands, the knife, the gun, the hair, and Morgana, which is probably the most impressive accessory that's come with Figma. And here we have Joker, and he looks really nice. That's the first thing I'm thinking is the sculpt looks great. It looks like it came right out of the game, honestly. Coattails are very poseable, allows for a lot of dynamic poses, and it's made of very flexible. The coattails are a little bit rigid, but the jacket's very flexible and feels very soft, like a soft plastic. So here we have some rotation in the head. You can rotate. It can go up a little bit, not much. It can go down a little bit. There's some limited articulation there, but it's still pretty good. His arms come out about this much, and they rotate all the way around. They can bend inwards about that much, and they can bend outwards about that much, and the wrists rotate, and the cuffs are actually a separate piece that can pop right off if you take the hands off, so you want to be a little bit careful with that. They're kind of loose, and they still feel okay, though. It's a very sleek looking figure. It's very tall, sort of. So his, uh, his legs, um, he has a bit of a ab crunch that's on a ball joint. It's very interesting. We'll take a look at that as well. It's a very flexible sort of ab crunch that allows for some dynamic poses, and the jacket is very flexible as well, as you can see. His legs can bend out about that much, and he can even do the splits, which is pretty impressive. There's a lot of very dynamic articulation in this figure, and I'm quite impressed with it, actually. It's not bad. It's what I would expect from a Persona 5 figure. So yeah, his legs can bend inwards about that much, and his shoe has about as much articulation as you expect, just one joint. It still works though, and uh, he can stand up on his own pretty well, but you'd probably want to use the stand that is included with him. So we'll just put him there. Alright. Overall, the figure is very nice looking, and I'm actually really pleased with the articulation and everything regarding it. Here's a quick look at the back, and we're going to take a look at the coattails. They really can move around a lot. They're all on, all on sort of ball hinges, and they can go upwards, downwards. They can make an effect, effect of jumping or diving, so there's a lot of dynamic poses that can be created, as you can see here. We're also going to take a look at his ab crunch. So his ab crunch is on a ball, a ball sort of joint. I haven't seen this on a figure before, but it's very interesting. He can really do a lot of different poses with this. If we take a closer look, yeah, it's, that's really on a ball joint. That's, there's a lot of mobility here, and the coattails can even go in all sorts of different places. There's a lot of different things you can do with this figure in regards to posing. So I'm pretty pleased with this. Pretty cool poses, yeah. So now I'm going to show you how to replace the face plates. So the way to do it is you need to pop out the hair piece, easy enough. And the faces just pop right out just like that. So I'm going to grab the second expression, the snarky looking face, and it's a bit of a tight fit, but it's, uh, it's pretty... it fits well. And let me just try to get this in. So we're going to get the faceplate in. 
and the hair just pops right in and you have an, a new expression for Joker and there he is. And there's a lot of good detail on the faceplate as well. It looks very nice, no paint mess, uh, you know, no paint slop or anything like that, it looks very clean. So I'm very pleased with these pieces. And now we're going to show you how to put on the mask. The mask is actually a separate hair piece that has the mask included and it goes right over the faceplate so you have a lot of different options in regards to customizing Joker and it looks just great. You can see his eyes right through the mask and the mask itself has great paint applications and it just looks really nice. So yeah, if you want to take a look at some of his accessories, here is his hand that grips the pistol. As you can see, it has enough space for the pistol to fit in there, and we're going to just put that pistol inside his hand real quick. Just doing that off camera. And here it is, and it's a very tight fit. It feels very firm, firmly grasped inside his hand, and it just works really well. One thing I noticed though, is that there's some very limited articulation in regards to his arm pointing forward with the gun. It's kind of unable to do that because of this plastic jacket piece, so it's kind of, he's kind of stuck pointing his gun at the side. He can't really point it directly in front of himself, as you can see here. The arms can't be moving forward due to that plastic, so you're kind of stuck with a pose like this if you want to make him point his gun outwards, which still works. It looks pretty good, but I wish uh, there would have been a little more mobility, and I understand why they had to sacrifice, because they wanted to give him that jacket piece, which unfortunately prevents some mobility with his arm. But in the end, it still looks like a good figure, posing even with the gun. So I'll show his uh, knife accessory now, and how that fits inside his hand. So this hand allows for gripping the knife, and it's also a very tight fit, and it feels good, and it works pretty well. So I'm uh, very pleased with these two accessories. They are very good accessories. I would expect this kind of quality from Figma, of course. Now we're going to take a look at Morgana, who is a really great figure, and I'm really pleased with him. He just has a great sculpt, a lot of great paint applications, and it just looks really nice. It's a great figure for your desk, and it just looks like Morgana inside his little pose with his arms crossed and everything and this guy's little tail and this is just a great figure that goes with your collection you know your persona collection if you didn't get his android or anything this is the next best thing to be honest so we're gonna pop in the little peg in his back for the stand oh slips a little bit but yeah the peg pops right into the back and allows us to put him in his stand like this so and he also has some articulation. His head moves, which is pretty cool. So he can do like a 360 with his head. Not that you would want to do that, but it works pretty well. You can pose him a little bit. He's obviously not an action figure, but he's in scale with the Joker Figma. And when the whole series comes out, you're going to want Morgana to be here as well. Because they're going to be making more Figmas for the rest of the cast. Which is pretty nice. And Joker's back there looking pretty cool with his knife and his gun. Overall, these are two pretty nice figures, and I am very pleased with how they look on the shelf. They do a lot of great poses, and I'm pretty excited for the next Figma and from Persona 5 to release. I think it's going to be on. I'll just put Morgana right there next to Joker, just to show how big he is compared to him. And yeah, the head quite tight actually. It's a, it's a tight fit. So they're, there they are standing next to each other and it looks like they're in pretty good scale from each other. That's about how big he is inside the game if I remember. I think that's it's pretty good sizing. Yeah you definitely, I'm definitely glad that they included him. He's a really good bonus accessory. And overall they both look really great on your shelf. They both have good paint detailing, they have good sculpting, especially Joker, look at his jacket and the buttons and the, the threads and everything, it just looks really good and very dynamic with the coattails and how they can move around. Here he is next to another Figma, the Figma of Misaka Mikoto, he's a bit taller than her, as expected I guess, so he's quite tall for a Figma, so he's taller than her, he 
He's taller than Shirai Kuroko's uh, Figma as well. And... Here he is next to the Figma Link, and he's still taller than Link, so this is a pretty tall Figma figure. We're gonna actually pull a tape measure up to Joker just to show how tall he is. He's quite tall for a Figma. I'm not too surprised since that's a Persona 5 stylized with uh, very tall characters, but uh, yeah, we uh, bring up the tape measure to Joker, he measures at about 5.5 inches, which is rather tall for a Figma, and it works very well. He looks natural next to other figure figures, and I'm sure he'll look good next to other figures in a Persona 5 set. And here he is next to the Hasbro Darth Vader for no apparent reason. Hey Morgana, that was some good work grinding in mementos for five hours straight. I think it's time to go home. Oh no, look out! It's Shido! You what? Overall, I'm super happy with this figure. It has a lot of great details, the paint application looks really nice, and the accessories are also really great. And I'm also glad that they included Morgana because he's a very essential character to Persona 5 and he looks really nice as well. And They both look like great figures that I would recommend having inside your collection if you're interested in collecting Figma and Persona 5 figures as well. Joker overall is a really good figure and a great beginning for this collection. I'm really excited to see the next figures inside the Persona 5 Figma wave. So I'm anticipating that quite a bit. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more Persona 5 content, including collectibles, live streams of my new Game Plus playthrough, and other live streams as well. I live stream Persona 5 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at around 7:30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so be sure to catch me around then. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye.